Hey, I'm Jeff Leisowitz here with BrownPaperTickets.com. I'm also the author of Not Effing Around, the No Bullshit Guide to Getting Your Creative Dreams Off the Ground. I love talking to creative people. A.S. King, right here, right now. How's it going? It's going great, Jeff. How are you? Awesome. It's going great. We are old pals from like a million years ago. We are. We it are. Is, it is true. From so, junior high. Junior high. So tell me. Awkward space on earth. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so tell me, what do you do? Who are you? What's going on? Oh, um, I'm an author. I've been an author for, I've been writing novels for 22 years. Um, and I, um, it took me a long time to get published. So, um, and I ended up in the young adult um, arena, but more like a cult young adult writer, not like, um, no offense to vampires and kissing, but you know, not the vampires and kissing, more the uh, magic realism, surrealism, uh, let's talk about what we really need to talk about kind of stuff. Um, so I delve into some pretty deep stuff in my books, sure. um, but that's, that's what I do. Um, and then I have other jobs in a way that go with it. I go to schools and at-risk schools, uh, juvenile detention centers, anywhere really to go and talk to students. Um, and then I also teach MFA uh, at Vermont College of Fine Arts. But that's really, and it's a way, it's in a way, if I wasn't the writer first, I couldn't do those other two things. So technically, I'm a writer. <laughs> technically, you got it going on, sounds like. Yeah. That's fantastic. So what do you love about about what you do, about writing? Um, I, wow, that's a great question. I love everything about it. I, I think... The fact that it took me 15 years to get published, and I'm, you know, I'm publishing like I guess this week my seventh novel came out, but it's really my 19th novel, you know. So I have a bunch of novels in the attic that no one's going to see, um, and I'm okay with it. It's sort of strange. So I think that kind of for me shows that I just love writing. I can't kind of I can't stop. So I must love it. Um, what do I love about it? I love that it gives me a voice. Um, I'm not uh, didactic or preachy. Um, I'm just able to just kind of put thoughts on paper and put feeling more like emotional stuff on paper and um, sort out how I feel about things through characters and stuff like that you know yeah. but I just I, I love having a voice and I love giving young people a voice it's one of the bonuses of, of landing in young adult fiction when I didn't expect it and then I realized how much I connect with young with with young people um, and so the more of them I meet as well the more in tune I am with their reality today and so it all kind of goes together. I love all of it, basically. Cool, cool. So was there a moment, like when you were growing up, when you either read a book or, or wrote something, that it, it just like clicked? And what was that? And, and what was that experience like? I knew I wanted to be a writer after reading a Paul Zendel book in eighth grade. Um, and it was called Confessions of a Teenage Baboon. Um, and I may still have the Exeter Junior High School copy uh, right behind me on that shelf there. And um, <laughs> sorry, they're still looking for it. <laughs> it. <laughs> um, but uh, I read that, and then I remember having—I always had a legal tablet with me because what good junior high nerd doesn't have a legal tablet? And I wrote. Uh, I was waiting in line for lunch um, by the metal shop window. I can say that to you because you know exactly where I waited in line for lunch. And I wrote down um, that I wanted to write books that helped adults understand teenagers better and help teenagers understand adults better. And then I came home to my very practical parents and they said, oh yeah, you'll write for the newspaper. And I was like, not quite what I had in mind. Um, and then I did a bunch of other things for 10 years before I uh, actually ended up writing. But um, I was dabbling in writing and I, I kept journals. So, but never fiction. I never had fiction in those. That was more just sort of me getting to know myself. So I think the reading actually influenced it more than the writing. Very cool. Very cool. So um, you, you've been at it for quite a while now. You've written all this stuff, you're teaching all this kind of things. It sounds like you've had success to, in some ways. Yes? Sure. Yeah. It's yes, hard. Absolutely. It's, it's hard. Right? It's, carrot it's carrot on the stick. That's the bummer about this business, and I think any business like this, you're you're the moron who attached the stick to your head, and 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 it's, so I wrote a, I wrote a, a piece about this. I haven't pl posted it yet. Um, I do as I do a uh, a series called the Writer's Middle Finger, and this is number eight. I just haven't posted it yet, but it's this idea that 
I don't feel successful, but I don't know why, because of course I am. I'm publishing now and I'm, I'm yeah, I am, but it's just hard to say that. Plus, I was, I was brought up modest. I'm a farm girl. I can't help it. But for me, success means I get a letter from somebody that says, you know, you saved my life or, you know, something heavy, <laughs> you know, yeah, like that. Yeah. That makes me feel more successful than like launch day on Tuesday where I just sat here in my pajamas and sort of went, why am I doing this? So, yeah, I've seen some success. Yeah. So what have I, you, yeah, yeah. What have you learned from your success as, as an artist, as a writer? I've learned that as a writer, success is actually just the writing. It's actually not, um, it's not anything else. It's not the publishing. It's not the backing. It's not the touring. It's not anything. You know, you're never going to be the, the number one backed person in your publishing house. So the most important aspect of writing is the writing. I learned that in those first 15 years and those eight novels I wrote that never went anywhere. Um, well, they went places. They just got, you know, no. Um, and so... Uh, I've learned that it's really all about the art. It's not about the commercialism. And the mix is really messed up. Um, I have students at, at, at Vermont College ask me, hey, what's the best craft book I should read? What's the, what's the book I should read about publishing so that I really know, like, you know, about how to publish and stuff? I'm like, read Joseph Heller's Catch-22. And they're like, that's a novel. I'm like, that's right. Read it. It's crazy. Nothing makes sense. That's what publishing's like. You got to read Catch-22. So if, if it comes down to it, success what I've learned is that success I guess is really a race against yourself it's, it's more like track than than basketball <laughs> if that makes sense you know what I mean you're running to, to better your time or better your craft more than anything else absolutely cool thank you so you write sounds like you write all the time every day most days something like that right so do you have <laughs> I wish <laughs> I wish okay do you have strategies to achieve your goals? Like, like what do you do to get to get to where you're trying to go? Yeah, I do. I mean, I do because I've had to produce since 2007. I've had to produce one novel a year at least. This year, I had to do two. Um, and I'm a math geek from way back. So what I found, like at the moment, I'm in revisions, right? So I've got two revision letters right here on my desk. And one of them should just be long gone. And I've just been kind of messing around. I don't know why. I just haven't been, my brain's just not in it these last two weeks. But, um, okay, six weeks. Uh, but when I'm writing first drafts, it's all about word count for me. So um, I always say, and I'll say this to, to students or whatever who do want to write. If you write a 1,000 words a day, Technically, you'll have 365,000 words at the end of the year. At a 70 to 100,000 word novel, you know, you're going to have three of them, you know, or two of them at least. I've, ne I've tried every year to write 1,000 words a day. Never happens. Never happens. But when I'm writing a novel, yeah. And then I'll have weeks where I go, okay, this has to be a 2,000 word a day week. Um, and I only have certain chunks of time to work in. So, you know, I don't shower and I don't eat. But I... Um, if I hit those 2,000 words, you know, or if I'm lucky enough to be somewhere, I was in Miami earlier this year because um, the Betsy Hotel does a fantastic writers in residence program. And it was, if I do 2,000 words, I can go swimming in the sea. And, um, <laughs> you know, so there's always an incentive, but it's a number for me. And it doesn't mean I have to do exactly 2,000. Usually I'll go over um, and sometimes I go under. And sometimes, like if that 1,000 words a day one, I always say 1,000, but if I'm at 500, it's still 500 I didn't have yesterday. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Good way to look at it. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked a little about success and, you know, your definitions of success and things like that. Let's flip it around. What about failure? Have you failed at anything and what have you learned from those failures? Oh, I failed at so many things. Failure is everything, I think. I mean, I have 500 rejection letters before email was invented, you know, or started being used, I should say, um, for that. So... I have enough to wallpaper probably a large room. Um, so rejection and failure taught me that I had to keep writing, you know, and I had to keep going. I had to get better. Um, I failed at, um, you know, one of those weirdo, not quite type A. I think I'm a type A minus person. Um, so. <laughs> Like, I don't like failure, but I also know my limits. Um, you know, I like singing in the car, but I'm not going to do it on stage. Uh, so I, f I fail at being a rock star. Um, I fail at 
going downstairs into my basement and playing my bass. It's sitting right there next to a drum kit and another guitar, and we could all just jam, but we never do it. So I fail at doing a lot of things like that, but with writing, um, you know, those novels in the attic, to me, they're not failure. They're failures, but they're not because they got me to the next one. So I don't know if that helped. What failure teaches me is that um, you have to keep going. And, and when I frame it in rejection letters, I think of it this way. I used to get one rejection letter, and it would make me send out five more queries. Now, unless they were all saying the same thing. If they were all saying, your protagonist is unlikable, I can't stand this book, I'd have to stop, look at the book again have another look at it, figure out, is it worth it for me, whatever, and then, you know, whatever, send out a different query letter that, you know, and, with, and it fix the book. But um, for the most part, those rejects, it always kind of made me more um, determined. Mm -hmm. Failure always makes me more determined. Great. That's good. Yeah. That's it's stubborn. Stubbornness. Yeah. Stubbornness to succeed. I'm going to succeed. Yeah, I guess so. I guess. Like I said, it's a carrot and a stick. <laughs> so stubbornness to get the thing. I'm not sure what it is yet, but then when I get it, I'm not even sure if I'm succeeding. So it's kind of strange, which is why it all comes back to the art, I think. You know? Mm -hmm. Cool. Whatever it is. Whatever art it is. Cool. Thank you. That's great. Let's talk about the comfort zone. Okay. Do you like the comfort zone? Do you stay in it? Do you push out of it? What's your deal? <laughs> What is it? Explain. You define your what define comfort zone for me. <laughs> well, okay. So the comfort zone, I think, in as far as uh, you know, creativity goes, is no staying in a place that you know creatively, intellectually, skills wise, stuff like that. Okay. I've never entered the comfort zone. I don't like the comfort zone. And you know what? The few times that I felt like I was writing the book versus the book was writing me, I guess that that actually makes me more uncomfortable. I know a lot of writers who are like, this this formula worked, um, so I'm going to keep doing it. I couldn't do that. Um, I went from, you know, uh, weird book to weirder book to weirder book to kind of, to me, lame book that everybody liked. I was like, this is going to sink me, but everybody seemed to like it. That was weird. And then, but then weirder book again. And, you know, I, no, I can't do that. This is the reason I don't do sequels. I can't do sequels because I'm like, I'm done with that character. I was done with that character two years ago. I, you, I know you're only meeting the character now, but I, I'm done. So I, I don't like the comfort zone. No, I have to constantly change. There's a Fiona Apple song called uh, Extraordinary Machine, and, and she talks about how she, she constantly has to uh, be changing. And I think even though I'm not a huge fan of all of her music, I do respect her very much. And um, I think that that line speaks to me very, very well. I don't, I don't, I, I'm not a very comfortable person. I'm weird that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bring it. That's cool. Uh, comfort zone is overrated. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I just think it would be boring. I think the comfort zone would be boring for me. I, I like to um, I like to do different things. You know, like at the moment, I'm I'm kind of working on a graphic memoir, a graphic novel, a uh, picture book because I thought of this weird picture book idea and I never thought I'd do a picture book for kids but I have kids so suddenly I'm like I could make a cool picture book um, and even like even in that way it's interesting because young adult fiction was out of my comfort zone I was writing adult books you know I'm, I'm more of a Vonnegut Robbins Salman Rushdie you know you know Marquez kind of fan and then suddenly I ended up in young adult fiction in America after all those years in, in Ireland that was and that has a different literary feel to it, Ireland, you know? So, um, but then I got approached to write a middle grade book, right? And I was really, I sat at this desk and I thought, I don't really know, like, that's not my, I can't do that. It's way out of my comfort zone. And then I thought, but I could do that and let's see what I do. And then I did it and it was fun. I had fun writing it and I like it. And it's a book of substance and it's no different than my other books and the fact that it's still me putting the, the heart on paper, you know, or the emotions or something. So, uh, yeah, it seems boring, comfort zone. It's still me putting the heart on paper. You are quotable, my friend. Is that that okay. is great. That's what I do. I had, And I always wanted to write about this this thing that happened when I was a little kid, and, and it just came out in this book. It, it's not that my books are autobiographical, but these little emotional and little little realities come out in them, and it's... it's um, 
you know, it's nice. And it's funny because the book you're reading now, I crawl through it is, I mean, even that book is uncomfortable. There's no comfort zone in that book. Not just for the character, for the readers. I've had people write to me and go, I am like, I nearly feel like I have to have a shower. That's the most uncomfortable book I ever read. And then I cried and I don't know why. And it's still uncomfortable for me, but it's, I like putting people, actually I have an essay called Sorry If This Makes You Uncomfortable. I just, I, because I want to talk about real stuff all the time. And, and not a lot of people want to do that. A lot of people just want to talk about um, bullshit, really. Um, so, yeah, comfort, comfort's for suckers. <laughs> well, you're doing the world a great service by, uh, writing, by so, writing these things, I think. So. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, so creative writers and really creative types of all kinds have been known to encounter resistance from people like parents, schools, you know, peers, basically, all over the place. Mm -hmm. How do you, or how did you, how do you move past that resistance to, to be who you are and do what you need to do creatively? Um, well, me personally, I moved 3,000 miles away. It helps for many people, I think. I think when people start to travel and they go away from the people who expect certain things of them, um, that helps a lot. Um, my neighbor's now mowing his lawn, and I'm sorry if you can hear that. That's all I'm saying. Um, so, um, so I moved 3,000 miles away and started writing novels because I knew I wanted to. Uh, but then when you get in, like into the business, um, you know, and people are like, this might be a little too weird uh, or something. I mean, that was why I was getting rejected at first. We had about three novels rejected once I had an agent. And it was because they were too weird. And I just thought, great. <laughs> this is great. They're too weird. At least they're not too boring. Um, and I don't know. I just kind of, I was always like that. Um, I don't, I was that kid who just kind of gave up wanting to be normal when I realized how normal looked. Does that make sense? So when it comes to the arts, I think that, you know, my mentor was a, was a, he was at the, when I met him, he was an 82 or 83 year old uh, abstract painter um, in Ireland. He's no longer with us. Um, his name is Tony O'Malley, fantastic painter. And he painted for many, many years. Um, and, and in the thirties in Ireland, he would like hide his paints and canvases under his bed because that was something you shouldn't do, you know, a serious man shouldn't be painting, that's crazy, he was, a, you know, he had to work in the bank, and, uh, you know, eventually, you know, in his 70s, he was starting to get shows, he moved away, though, he moved down to uh, Penzance, and, uh, or St. Ives, and, um, in England, and, and he was finally accepted, really, in his 60s, and 70s, and 80s, and, I mean, if you gotta wait that long, it's all about the art, you know. So that how do you meet with the resistance? You get it out through art. I think that's why we're artists. We're artists because it gives us our outlet. And even with rejection, I mean, a lot of that book that you're reading again, I crawl through it. Is all a lot of it's about um, about crawling through this business and crawling through the same thing. Resistance it talks about Mozart and how you know. I don't know if you've ever seen Amadeus, but you know, too many notes. And there's Mozart, and they still have to say too many notes. It's like, really? This is Mozart. Just zip it, right? But um, so the resistance, I think it's within. I think as a, an artist, I think the resistance came with us. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. It's great. Great answer. So when we do have the courage or the bravery to manifest our creativity, to actually write the book or the poem or be an actor, a photographer, whatever your thing is, word on the street is it has a sort of healing component. Can you speak to that? You mean like does, does the actual making the art, does that heal the artist? Yes, uh, I would Absolutely. say, yeah, Absolutely. good. I can't, I mean, I can speak to it. To, I, 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 can't, I sound like I'm plugging a book and I never do this, but the book, I crawl through it is the key to me if that makes any sense, and I've only really discovered it this week, because it was launch week, and I, this is how I usually am at launch week. Yeah, whatever, I did that two years ago. Let's, I'm, I'm two books ahead now. Whereas this week, I sat here and stared at that book a lot, and opened it a lot, and kind of looked at it, and there's something about it. It was incredibly freeing, and every, every book has a little bit of that in it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, and I think paintings, like I still paint, um, 
when I was a photographer, that's what my degree is in, I didn't, I felt like not a failed photographer, but I just didn't think I was putting it on, on, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't think there was, I could express myself the same way as with writing, so, um, I've completely forgotten the question. <laughs> that's, that's all right. Did I answer it? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. So the question was the healing aspect of being creative. For you, let me make a better question, I guess. For you, how has being a writer aided in your healing as a person? I think being a writer, um, I think for me, it heals it heals old wounds. I mean, I do believe, and I, th I think this is why I go back to the youth again, because I think when I go into those schools, those aren't old wounds for those young people, okay? They're not little kids, they're teenagers. We blow them off all the time. Um, only in the last few decades, mind you, they were actually worth something to us before then. Um, but now they're just drama queens and blah, 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 and we roll our eyes. But we all suffered that, and we still have it, and for me, so it kind of is almost like a double healing because I get to heal the me that's here now when I when I write parents or when I write teens that are just like me, um, and then I get to heal my old self and I get to pull up things. I get to pull things up. Things come out. You know, the books write me. I don't write them. So sometimes I'll write a sentence and sit back and go, "Oh wow, I have a problem with that. There's a problem there. Maybe that's what causes me, you know." slight anxiety attacks sometimes perhaps I should explore that in this book and then I do and then I feel better it's it just kinda happens but I definitely think I, mean, I haven't met an artist yet who isn't healed by their work no matter what they do you know yeah, yeah me too yeah very powerful stuff mm -hmm. if you're willing to engage in it and, and go deep into it really yeah you have, and you have to do it as, as someone who teaches it as well there are people who just are in it to publish or in it to do or find that bestseller or find that that uh, what do they call it uh, the F off trilogy or you know whatever it is it's gonna make you millions of dollars because for some reason we've been fed this idea that money's gonna make us happy and um, in actual fact I find that if they sell, they actually sell their F off trilogy it's the thing that makes them sad um, because what they really wanted to be was an artist and but I find a lot of students very reticent to dig deep that's the biggest one they don't dig deep um, they um, they're not listening to themselves. They're not digging in there and trying to find the stuff that really hurts them. And then instead, they'll write me this sort of surfacey story about, um, you know, college, some, you know, or whatever it is. They write me a surface story, and I'm like, "There's nothing in this. There's no meat. Where's, where's the? It's not that everything has to have pain, but there's got to be something. I mean, the best literature that ever has pain in it, you know. So I think that, and the whole point of putting the pain there is to heal." the person who's reading it and maybe the author you know him or herself I don't know yeah. but yeah that's how art connects with us right if somebody really puts it into it and we read it or listen to it or see it in a movie or whatever it is that's it's a speaking that that maybe we can't articulate ourselves yeah 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 yeah. And that's that would that would echo the letters I get I mean cause that's the, they're like this book is exactly what I think and it's sort of nice to get that because these are people who maybe aren't artistic. Maybe they're doing other things. And and but they read this and it freed them in some way. I mean, you've read books that freed you in some way, you know. And I'm same deal. I read a book early in January and it was just like, yes, this book. This was and it just made me feel better as a human being because somebody had the guts to put their guts on paper. It's sort of like a nice chain, I guess, if we look at it that way. It's a chain of guts. The chain of guts. <laughs> Yeah, but the chain of guts, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've been doing this for a while, you're a teacher, you know, you've got books out, all this kind of stuff. Do you ever have doubts about your ability and talent as a as a writer, your value as a writer, and how do you, how do you deal with that? Because a lot of people get stuck there. Every day. Every day. I mean, when I was getting, when I was getting rejection letters, and I mean, I've been unpublished still twice as long as I've been published, right? So I can't quite remember what that was like. It was definitely, I knew I was writing something good, but it just was being misunderstood or maybe I was being, a, you know, too abstruse or too something, I don't know. But um, uh, now, even with success and all this, absolutely, I mean, there's a reason these two, these editorial letters aren't getting looked at. It's, it's, 
I look at the book and I, I call it gibberish. It's part of my process. Part of my process is I've written this book. I've revised it seven million times. I'm done now. It's gibberish. It doesn't make any sense. I don't even think the sentences make sense. And, and, and then I have doubts. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely had of the published books, I could name you the ones that I thought would sink my career. And they ended up winning prizes. And you're like, what? You know, what are they smoking? And, um, and then, you know, you realize that maybe you're, there's something in that, you know, I've never reread those books. It's not something I sit down and do. If I'm going to read a book, I'm going to read, you know, one of the million on my to be read pile. Um, so, yeah, I feel those doubts all the time. How do you get past them? For me, it's pressure. I mean, I'm not going to get the next check. I mean, that's easy. But before, when there were no checks involved, I got past them because the ideas came and then I had to get them out of my head. It's part of, are you a writer or aren't you? You know, I used to get people asking when I would, I would, I moderated a, or I helped moderate a, um, uh, a panel once where people would some they would always ask it aspiring writers when should I give up they would raise their hand when should I give up and I'm like give up you're a writer like you don't ever give up if you're if you're a writer then you want to keep writing that's the whole point um, and I'll even have people who have one book out ask well what do I do next and I'm like well you're writing the next book right and they're like well no I mean I want to promote and I want to sell and I'm like the book is out the ship has sailed you should be two books ahead not should I don't want to ever should anybody I hate shooting people um, but you know um, you just you gotta keep writing you just because you can't stop uh, that's for me anyway uh, I couldn't stop um, but also I did take a few breaks uh, in those really discouraged moments I took a break between book um, I think like six, five and six or six and seven and I took like a two-year break and wrote poetry and painted and, you know, uh, I was living in Ireland at the time, so I just like kind of paid more attention to my tomato plants and my chickens and stuff, you know, I just go and live life. Because that's the other thing, you can't be an artist unless you're living a life. I don't think you can be an artist unless you're out doing something. And if you're in your office all the time as a writer, I think you end up, what else, what am I going to write about? I don't have much, I have cool things on my walls, but I don't have much stuff in here. So I prefer to take a trip somewhere, I don't know, walk like when I'm in a place that's safe enough, I can just walk around at 2 o'clock in the morning and see what's going on, you know? So that inspires me too. So it's okay to take a break too, I think. Cool. Very cool. Mm. Okay, so I've got one more question for you here. Okay. You are talking to all of the writers who want to move forward in their careers, whether it's getting published or just finishing their novel or their poetry or whatever it is, right? So the not effing around bullet points from A.S. King, what might they be? Write something every day. Finish your novel or finish your poem. Finish things. Um, if you get lost, start something else. I often start my next book in the middle of the other book when I'm getting discouraged because I have total suckage. It's just like this book sucks. It's horrible. I will then start writing the next book, which is great, believe me, six months later when I have to write the next book. Um, uh, believe in yourself. Be defiantly creative. That's a quote from me that I have stuck on my wall. Be defiantly creative, and I'll give you a quote from my mentor, Tony O'Malley. Never be swayed by anything but your own work and vision. That's not my bullet point. It's Tony O'Malley's bullet point. It's on his gravestone. It's that important. Um, and wow. it's so true. If you're swayed by anything other than your own work or vision, you suddenly lose yourself. You lose your art because art can only be yours if you're an artist. There, that's the best I could do with the bullet points. Hell yeah, A.S. King. That was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. 